On important issues of racial and social justice, over time, professional athletes in America have shown an extraordinary power to set the agenda, to shape the agenda, sometimes to find true north and effect change in a very unique way. Kevin Blackestone writes all about it beautifully in the Washington Post. He says this, quote, the NBA moved its all-star game out of Charlotte in protest of North Carolina's so-called bathroom bill, which discriminated against transgender Americans. The NFL stripped the 1993 Super Bowl from Phoenix after Arizona voters rejected propositions that would have made Martin Luther King Day an official state holiday. And in 1965, the American Football League moved its all-star game out of New Orleans after black stars refused to play upon being shunned at hotels and restaurants in the city. So given the context of this moment, the next question is rather obvious. Well, Georgia faced similar consequences from sports teams for its new voter restrictions. The answer may come down to Major League Baseball's All-Star Game, which is scheduled to be played this July in Atlanta. The executive director of the league's players union told the Boston Globe that players are, quote, very much aware of the Georgia voting bill and that the union would welcome a chance to talk to league executives about what to do with the All-Star Game. It's a consideration steeped in historical ironies. One of the reasons Atlanta became a so-called sports mecca in the first place was because it was essentially rewarded for its mayor supporting the 1964 Civil Rights Act. So we'll go back to Kevin Blackstone, and his conclusion is this, quote, until further notice what sports brought to Atlanta, it should take away. This could be yet another example of how sports can serve a greater good and live up to its vision of itself as an agent of social change. Joining our conversation is the aforementioned author of the piece we keep reading from, Kevin Blackestone, panelist on ESPN's Around the Horn, visiting professor at the Philip Merrill College of Journalism at the University of Maryland and sports commentary columnist for The Washington Post. And the Rev is still here. So, Kevin, I, I saw that um, interview with the um, players, now the head of the Players Union, and I was waiting right. for someone to write what you wrote and to take me through all that history. Tell me what you think. Baseball does have a somewhat shorter history of activism than maybe the NBA, especially recently. But what, what, what do you think is happening right now inside the league? Well, you laid out what struck me um, in that there's a historical irony to all of this, right? That the fact that Atlanta is this sports mecca that we've come to know it as for hosting Final Fours and hosting Super Bowls and uh, and and national college football championships um, and having all of the sports leagues uh, represented there at one time or another. Um, the reason is because this city stood up and stood out um, in the old South um, as the civil rights movement was was rolling along to try and make change um, to try and protect. Uh, for one thing, voting rights. So the, the, the mayor at the time, um, Ivan Allen, became the first Southern mayor to testify in favor of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Title I of which is voting rights. Mm -hmm. And shortly thereafter, um, it became a, comforting, a comfort spot um, for Major League Sports um, to, to, to find a new home in, in the South. And so now we look at what has happened this month, what has happened just in the in the past week, and you see what the, the situation is. You know, here's a city that was rewarded with sports for what it did for civil rights. And now it is turning its back on that history. And so I think that it is incumbent upon sports to remind Atlanta of what it did to invite Atlanta, to embrace Atlanta in the 20th and now the 21st century. And, and start to pull back on some of those rewards. You know, and, and Kevin, there's always this backlash, right? Boycotts are this tool, um, a political tool of last resort. But that's where we are. Republicans are now it, pushing state by state by state cures for a disease that doesn't exist. I, 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 in the wake of the 2000 recount, voter fraud was investigated. And, you know, nada. There is not systematic voter fraud. And anything that happened seemed to have happened. I mean, Donald Trump's the only person under investigation for trying to impact or overturn an election. So do you think that makes it a, a, a slightly easier fit, something that isn't really comfortable for, for sports to be this active in terms of a boycott of Atlanta? You know, absolutely. If we, if we hold up sports, and sports like to hold, it likes to hold itself up uh, right now in particular um, as some sort of model for meritocracy and being in the vanguard of social change, then 
this is a time for sports to step up. You know, does this mean the Atlanta Falcons, um, the Atlanta baseball team, um, the WNBA, the dream are going to move out of Atlanta, move out of Georgia? Um, no, but it does mean that these uh, these um, opportunities to bring in larger events like Major League Baseball's All-Star Game, um, like the Final Four, which was going to be in Atlanta last year, if, if not for, for the pandemic. Um, uh, you know, the World Cup is looking, at, um, is looking at Atlanta and one of the host cities in 2026 when it's in this country. Um, these are times for sports to step up and say, no, this is, this is antithetical to what we really stand for when it comes to humankind. And, and we can't be involved in this. We can't endorse it with our presence. And I think that's the message that sports needs to send. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.